If there is one thing that puts the characters on edge, it's the possibility of contracted a disease or being infected with poison. Despite that high combat skill or magical prowess, when the disease or poison hits, they could easily be rendered comatose or even dead. So in this video, let's have a look at the Mithras rules all to do with diseases and poisons. Welcome back to my channel everyone and another Mithras rules video. If you don't know who I am, my name is Inwills. I'm a content creator from the United Kingdom. I currently stream on Twitch and create content on YouTube about getting organized, role-playing games and successful streaming. And before I start, I would just like to say thank you to everybody who have mentioned how helpful these videos are. It, I really do appreciate it, so thanks. But you're here for the Mithras Rules video all about poison, so let's get on with it. So poisons and disease actually operate in the same way. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to refer to them as poisons rather than saying poisons and disease every time. So the rule book talks about various characteristics or elements of poisons. And so what I'm going to do is quickly give you a rundown of them and what they mean. So the first element uh, which is also perhaps the most important and the one that can be a little bit complicated is potency. So potency is expressed as a percentage skill for that poison. So in order to infect a character, the poison or the GM would have to roll that percentage or less for the poison to be effective. So for an example, if the potency of the poison was 30%, then the GM would roll a percentile dice and if it was 30% or less, the poison has taken effect. But hang on a minute, because remember, this is going to be an opposed roll. So the character also gets to roll either their endurance or willpower depending which stat is used to resist the poison. So if we take the example of the poison having a potency of 30% and being opposed by endurance, the GM would roll their percentile dice and if they got 30% or less, the poison takes effect. However, the character will roll their endurance or willpower and see whether or not they are successful and whether or not their score is higher than the roll of the potency. So let me give you an example here to help sort this out. So let's say the potency of the poison is 46% and a character has an endurance roll of 32%. Bless them. So both roll, the poison gets 27%, which is less than 46%, so is a success. But the character rolls 30%. Now this is also a success because it's less than 32%, their endurance, but it is higher than the po poison's roll of 27. So the character resists it lucky character. I hope that explains it, but if you want to go back over this part of the video and just jot things down and have a play with it, then do so. If not, let's move on. As well as potency, poisons have the following elements. So the first one is application, and this is the method the poison uses to get into its victim. These include ingestion, i.e. eating it, or contact, touching it. Next up is resistance and this identifies whether or not the endurance skill or the willpower skill will be used for resistance roles. Next is the onset time, the delay before the poison takes effect. So for example, if the poison, if the onset time is one day, the character might touch something, be infected, but it would take one day for the effects to happen. Duration 
how long the poison will last once it started to take effect, whether there is an antidote or a cure, and finally, what conditions the poison or disease causes. Now, don't worry, you don't have to think about all of these elements yourself. And for example, with the condition of what the poison causes, there is a complete list of all the possible conditions on page 75 of the core rulebook. These range from bleeding and confusion to unconsciousness and hallucinations. There is certainly a lot to take in about poisons and diseases, but don't worry because as always, Mithras has provided you with some examples that you can use. Um, so if you are pressed for time, you can check these out. These include poisons such as cobra venom and the deadly red pox disease. Now, if you would like to have more information about poison that the rules guru on the Mithras Matters podcast gave, shared his wisdom with us on the subject in the Mithras Matters podcast, episode 43 called Deadly Poisons and Possible Perceptions. So definitely go over there and have a listen to the podcast if you would like more information about poisons. I'll put the link to that episode in the description below. And that's it. The Mythras Rules video all about poison completed. Do let me know in the comments below how you have used poisons or diseases in your campaigns. And if you would like some ideas for adventures related to poison, then I shared these some of these with you in the Gibbering GM video all about adventures related to poisons. I'll put the link in the description below. So until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special and you don't get any nasty poisons or diseases. Happy Mithrasing everyone. See ya. Bye.